fast review for the radiology x-rays uh, when the radiology x-ray is given to you you have to answer three important uh, things first number one which view whether it is a plain x-ray or contrast x-ray and which area so for this for example if this x-ray has been given don't see the light left superior inferior whatever is written on the x-ray don't see anything as a doctor you should see the structures then you find out the shoulder joint whether it is plain or contrast contrast means barium sulfate barium minima like that some contrast material will be given by orally or by injection it will be given to your body and that thing will be seen on the screen that is called contrast so here the plain x-ray is seen means that is called plain x-ray and which view ap view anterior posterior view antero is uh, it means anterior through which way the x-ray is coming that is called antero posterior view anterior means a rays will be coming anteriorly the slide x-ray slide will be placed posteriorly so it is called as antero posterior view number two and posterior anterior view we will take for the chest x-ray only so for this and all we will take antero posterior view and which joint it is it is a shoulder joint so number one these three structures will be seen and then number one and then number one uh, you can see this is shoulder joint and uh, see these areas are all opaque and white it means the rays are not passing through that but you could see this area the lung is seen it is dark black dark in color because it contains air so the air transmits the x-rays that's why it appears black in color so the joint shows the joint shows number one coracoid process number two acromion process number three acromion of clavicular joint number four head of the humerus number five the neck of the humerus the head of the humerus here is the anatomical neck of the humerus and here is the surgical neck of the humerus and you can see the glenoid cavity here see so this is a supraglenoid tubercle and here is the infraglenoid tubercle this is a lateral border of the scapula so these are the things you are supposed to show and then if you go to the next x-ray that is your L x-ray of the elbow joint ap view this is the ap view shows number one you just see the epicondyles so how to answer plain x-ray ap view and uh, shows the elbow joint uh, you could see the medial epicondyle lateral epicondyle and you could see the bones first okay radius and ulna radius you have the head of the radius and this is the neck of the radius this is the radial tuberosity and here you can see this is a humerus lower end of the humerus so here you could see the capitulum and here you could see the trochlea what is present in the front trochlea capitulum and trochlea and you can see the oligronal process here okay the superimposed the trochlea is here superimposed by the oligronal process this fossa is called the oligronal fossa so this is the lateral epicondyle and this is the medial epicondyle this is about the ap view and then next radius and ulna are seen then next thing is okay this is the lateral view of the elbow joint so here you can see again the radius oh, okay this is the radius and this is the ulna you can see the oligronal process of the ulna and radius head of the radius is seen here you can see the trochlea you can see the trochlea here and this curve this this curve is called as olecranon sorry the coronoid process this is called coronoid process and this is called trochlea and this is called the olecranon process so these three things you should see here and then here this one already we have seen the next thing is here see look at this this is the, the uh, plain x-ray ap view shows the wrist joint and what are the things you can see number one radius and ulna 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 never takes part in the wrist joint formation and this should you should tell and then the carpal bones how to read out the carpal bones okay first radius after seeing the radius so go here okay uh, she she looks too pretty okay she looks too pretty we'll see some other bone just hold on x-ray you have already seen the wrist joint w okay now we have we'll see this okay so here you could see that here we'll see 
okay the radius is here so the bones takes part is scaphoid she looks lunate tricuteral she looks too pretty pisiform then the distal row trapezium trapezoid both are here only two different shades are seen and capitate hook of hamid ham see capitate is the largest carpal bone lunate is the most common carpal bone which is prone for dislocation and pisiform is a sesamoid bone sesamoid bone we'll ask what is sesamoid a bone which gets ossified inside the tendon is called sesamoid it gets ossified in the tendon of flexor carpi ulnaris and then um, scaphoid is the most common bone for, prone for avascular necrosis so this we will ask lunate for prone for dislocation and the most important one if you see the thumb see the metacarpal this is the first metacarpal so you could see the small bone prominence here that is called the that is also called a sesamoid bone this sesamoid bone is present in which tendon we will ask flexor pollicis brevis is the answer it is present inside the flexor pollicis brevis these are all called metacarpals these are all called the base of the metacarpals and the upper one is called head of the metacarpals that's all about the wrist joint